Hey guys, so welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, we are going to talk about something important, especially if you're planning to visit to the Czech Republic. We will let you know what it is and how to apply for it. Now, let's talk about the requirements for getting the visit visa to the Czech Republic. If you are fully sponsored by your family member, your friend, fiancé or boyfriend, but remember, uh, take note, this uh, visa only allows you to stay up to three months. The number one requirement based on the checklist is the application form. So your application form must be printed. This should be signed by the applicant attaching your visa photo on it and be submitted as well to the VFS center on the day of your appointment. Also, you can find the form through this website. The second requirement is the passport. Your passport must be valid at least three months beyond from your Shenzhen visa application date. You should also have two blank pages available on it so they can use it for stamping when you're already once you're already traveling to the Czech Republic and going back to the Philippines. One of the most important and one of the most confusing requirements ever is the proof of ties in the Philippines. What is a proof of ties? Proof of ties is a proof that you're coming back to the Philippines after your stay for three months in Europe. Because this three months of visit visa is not a long-term visa, so that means you already need to come back to the Philippines. That means we need to provide an assurance to the embassy that we are really coming back and we are not overstaying in the country where you're applying for. This is very risky and very complicated requirement because the embassy are sometimes very strict about it, especially if you did not provide enough proof that you're already coming back to the Philippines and if they can't um, really assure that you're already coming back and they are doubting. Most of the applicants are getting denied of this. One of the most strong proof of ties actually that you can use and number one is proof of employment. Second is proof of properties and the third one is proof that you are a student. Sometimes our um, applicants are not employed. Also, they don't have any properties. Most of them were not able to provide much about those. Most of them were denied, but there are also cases that they provided other documents providing to the embassy that they're coming back to the Philippines so they got approved. But still, these three requirements are very, very important so you won't be denied in your application. For proof of employment, the number one is you should be employed, but you should be employed for four years already not later than three months uh, you should be employed one year and above because the embassy actually wants an assurance they're coming back so if you're already um, a long time employee in your company you really cannot lose the job because you already um, have this job for a long period of time they are assured that you're coming back to the Philippines that means you also have to provide a supporting documents proving that you are employed number one proof of employment is the certificate of employment the second supporting document um, the embassy really needs you to submit is the law or we call it a, a leave of absence approval from your HR, there should be a letter stating there addressed to the embassy that your company is allowing you to have a holiday vacation from this day up until the dates should be matched from your departure and your return because again, the embassy are very investigative and they will really look um, every specific details that you're providing to them. Make sure every date, um, every information that you're giving are all matched. You can also provide a tax record, social security contributions as just the supporting documents as well. Other one, if you are a student, so you can provide as well the LOA um, from your dean or from your school administrator. Um, allowing you to have vacation leave from that uh, specific date up and until to that date when you're coming back to the Philippines. The other one is also the proof of properties because the embassy will think if you have a property in the Philippines so that means you're coming back. You cannot leave it. Uh, especially, for example, you have a car, you own a house, you, you own a condo or you own um, a land a property. That means you can provide them document showing that you are really the owner under your name. In my case, that time, um, I wasn't able to process the land title. So what I did, I only gave the deed of sale to the embassy, but it was actually fine. So the next requirement is the applicant's financial means. Our financial situation is very important. It is also considered as your strong ties to the Philippines. The embassy will carefully review these several documents 
personal bank statements at least six months and above, your original bank certificate, personal bank books, credit card statements. The embassy will carefully scrutinize these documents to ensure that you have the means to support your trip. And also, they look for your consistent deposits and evidence that the funds have been in your account for at least six months to prevent someone that because other people are if they want to travel to Europe and knowing that there should be applicants financial means they will open a bank account and then deposit money there and just one day or the bank is not even older than six months so it's really risky remember that even if you're fully sponsored by someone still the embassy will consider your own financial means or your own financial stability so this may require additional documents explaining the source of funds for example if you're employed so you can submit your pay slips your tax records social security but if um, you receive if you are unemployed and you receive this money from someone you can also provide documents supporting documents to the embassy for like example receipts remittance receipts or and any other transfer of records from banks for them to know that this money where came from someone because you're unemployed next is um, the proof of travel arrangements or the flight reservations when submitting your flight reservation to the embassy it is very important to note that you don't have to purchase or make any payments at this stage because the embassy also accepts the dummy flight reservation as long as it includes the departure dates and also the return dates and these dates should align your intended travel plans and the return ticket should also match the date you inform the embassy when you're coming back home to the philippines and this way you can also save money just in case your visa will be denied the next one is the day-to-day -day itinerary if you're planning to visit to the Czech republic for three months so that means you have to write a 90 days um itinerary day-to-day -day itinerary outlining your activities and plans the places you want to visit and also even if you don't have any places to visit but still you have to write the things that you're doing each day because this shows authorities that you have already planned your entire stay in the Czech Republic and also they will know what's the purpose of your stay. And to add as well, uh, make sure that they, your day-to-day -day itinerary, your departure dates and also your return dates are the same because um, they will also check your credibility um, if you are really honest and showing the right information to them. Next is your always travel health insurance. Your travel health insurance should also have a COVID coverage with a minimum amount of 30,000 euros so it should not be less than that. The insurance companies that I can suggest um, which are reliable and cheap, the first one is for me based on my experience because I bought from this company, AXA Global Healthcare, based on the other um, people who got the Shenzhen visa they also bought from Alayan, Just Travel, Safety Wing, Pacific Cross but I'm not sure because I don't have experience with those but for AXA I bought it online and I think for my entire stay in the Czech Republic for three months I bought around 8,000 to 10,000 pesos for three months the next requirement is the proof of accommodation that can be a hotel confirmation hotel voucher or a letter of promise of accommodation by your host or we call it invitation letter and these requirements should be printed um, with a maximum pages of two so if you are being sponsored by a family member or someone they can provide you a letter of invitation that serves as a confirmation of your accommodation in my case both of my husband and his mom fully sponsored my entire stay in the czech republic so they went above and beyond to create the um, invitation letter for me stating that they will be fully sponsoring me and they will provide my accommodation in their house However, we also provide a supporting documents that the house is owned by his parents so that supporting documents was notarized in their munici municipality here in the Czech Republic and after that they sent the photocopy to me through an email. Also, these letter of promise and supporting documents are not only assurance to the authorities that you have an accommodation 
but this actually also serves as a proof of sponsorship why because it's also a proof that your sponsors have um, their property and they can or they have the capacity to take care of you during your stay here in the Czech Republic the other requirements is the proof of um, relationship if you're sponsored by your friend or by your boyfriend you have to provide you said conversation proof of pictures together at least 10 pages each and also for married couples you can provide the marriage certificate that's very easy for married couples but quite complicated for those who are not married it's also very important to the embassy to know um, how many years you've been friends or how many years you are couples for them to know you can write them a cover letter what is a cover letter cover letter is actually your front page it's like a story about yourself while you're applying a visa what's the purpose of your stay in the Shenzhen country where you're applying how many years you've been friends how many years you've been together with your boyfriend where did you meet uh, why you want to go there in your country so you can't you have to express everything you want to tell to the embassy because the cover letter is like the messenger between you and the embassy. You know, by just submitting the requirements, we, we don't talk to the embassy. So they really don't know our intentions, why we want to, to visit our boyfriend. The cover letter is like the sum up of all of the requirements and also the... It's like the diary for the embassy. It should at least be two pages of paper. Also, if we talk about financial means, that doesn't mean that it's only you, the applicant, who should provide it to the embassy. However, it's also very important that your sponsor should also provide a financial proof that they have the ability to sponsor you or they have the capacity to sponsor you. For example, maybe you have two sponsors, so both of your sponsors should provide documents, for example, personal bank statements showing regular income for the latest six months. The personal bank statements can be sent through email because their embassy doesn't require if it's original or not. However, it's very important to note that the bank certificate should be original. Stay tuned for part two and we will discuss essential information about the sponsor's requirements and we'll give you tips for a smoother visa application process. So thanks for watching and good luck for your visa application journey and safe travels. Bye!